All right, welcome back everybody. Um, so in our last video, we discussed collections of open sets and ways that we could uh, formally discuss them, right? Or, or ways that we could sort of organize this notation, including how we could index them using some set of indices. Uh, and we discussed these three examples. In two of them, the set of indices was a finite set of numbers, right? Or a finite list of numbers. So here it was just numbers one, two, three. Here it was the numbers one through 11. Um, but we also saw how our set of indices can be, can be weirder, um, perhaps, right? So in this example, the set of indices was all uncountably infinitely many real numbers uh, between one and 10, including both endpoints. So this was a collection of open sets that contained uncountably infinitely many open sets. Now, our big idea in describing collections of open sets or a big idea that we'll be really interested in is whether or not those open sets form an open cover of another set. So a collection of open sets is said to be an open cover of S if and only if S is a subset of the infinite union of all of those open sets in the collection F. Okay, so what this means is that we want to consider sets, or, or we want to look at a set S that'll just be a subset of the real numbers, and then we'll look at an associated open cover, and we will see whether or not that open cover is, or what, whether or not that collection is an open cover. Um, I think I said that poorly. Let me try that again. We're gonna be talking about a set S. We'll be looking at a collection of open sets F, and we are interested in knowing whether or not that collection of open sets actually forms an open cover. Um, so let's look at our three examples from before and let's look at, say, the set S is, eh, let's say the closed interval from one to 10. All right, so the closed interval from one to 10, um, I'll sort of draw it at least, I'll draw it on all three of them, that's going to be this set right here, uh, this set right here, and once more for good measure, it will be uh, this set right here, right? So it's going to be this set in the domain. And for the set S, I can look at each of these open sets or open, um, this, each of these collections of open sets, each of these script Fs, and see whether or not they are an open cover of the set S. And in each case, we see that they are an open cover of the set S. Um, because in each of these cases, what we see is that if I were to take the union of all of the sets in the collection, they would actually completely cover this set S. So S would be a subset of that union. Uh, and let's verify this, right? So in the first example, the union of the three sets in the collection, right, would just be the set of all elements that are in at least one of the open sets. Um, and so that would really be everything in the open interval from zero all the way up to 11. Right, so the union in this case is the open interval from zero to 11. The open interval from zero to 11 definitely contains the closed interval from one to 10. And so we would say that this is an open cover of the set S. Uh, similarly, the second example uh, behaves similarly. The open, uh, I'm sorry, the union of all of these sets ends up being every element that's in at least one of them um, in this example, that ends up just being the open interval again from zero to 11. In fact, it ends up being the same as that uh, largest element, that 11th uh, element in the collection. So the union in this case is the interval from zero to 11, uh, the open interval from zero to 11, which clearly contains the closed interval from one to 10. So again, this is an open uh, cover of that set. Now, finally, we can talk about um, this final example. And what we see here is that uh, actually, once again, I'll draw this one underneath. 
the union of all of these is going to be the open interval from zero all the way up to 11 once again. Um, so indeed, in each of these cases, the infinite uh, union turns out to be the open interval from zero to 11 that contains the closed set from one to 10. And so this closed set from one to 10 is going to be, um, well, inside the union. But the way that I would really say this is that this collection F is an open cover of S, this collection F is an open cover of S, and this collection F is also an open cover of S. Awesome. So at this point, um, we have this idea of an open cover and how a collection of open sets can be an open cover for a set S. Now I'm interested in whether or not our collection F does something uh, which we call uh, admitting a finite subcover. So if we have an open cover of S, and here we have three different examples, we say that F admits a finite subcover of S if and only if there exists a finite number of open sets in F, so call them O sub one through O sub n, such that S is contained in the union of that finite list. So let me say that in slightly, um, in other words. Um, our set S is already contained in our, or as, as a subset of the union of our open sets in F. So F is already an open cover of S. What we're interested in is in the case where F is infinite, right? And there are infinitely many open sets in it. Can we cover S by throwing away most of the sets and just looking at a finite list that remains? So can we take our open cover, which might contain infinitely many elements, and find a finite list of those uh, elements, a finite list of those open sets that also do the job of covering S. So let's look at our three examples here and see whether they admit a finite subcover. And what we see is that the first two, right, the red set and the purple set, um, automatically do. Those are already themselves finite. Uh, and so we can simply take the set itself as its own finite subcover, right? So in other words, our set S is, a, um, is covered by F and is covered by the finite uh, subset of F that is just O1, O2, and O3. In other words, because F is finite, it is its own uh, finite subcover of the set S. Similarly, purple set contains 11 sets, but it is its own finite subcover because again, it is already finite. So the real interesting question in this case is this blue one. This blue one has infinitely many uh, elements in it, right? It has infinitely many open sets in it. Can I throw away all but a finite number of them? Uh, and I'm gonna clear some space so we can examine this in more detail. Okay, we're back. Um, so I've cleared a little bit of space. Again, this set F uh, has infinitely many elements in it. And when I take the union of all infinitely many of them, I cover the set from zero to uh, 11. But can I throw away most of those elements, keep only a finite number of them, and see whether or not that finite number will actually cover my set S, so my set from one to 10. Um, and the answer in this case is yes, we can throw away most of these elements and leave only a handful. Um, and let's try to do this visually, right? I mean, it's sort of a silly picture because I had only drawn finitely many, um, but let's take this set here. Okay, let's uh, draw some of those back in. Let's draw in this 
in this. Okay, so what I have here is a finite list of elements. I have O sub one, I have O sub two, I have O sub pi. Um, let's say that this one is O sub four. Let's say this is O sub five. Uh, that is a errant pencil mark. Um, but it looks like we've got a little bit of a gap. So let's include, oh, I don't know. Let's say this is O sub 5.5, uh, 5, right? Five and a half. O sub seven, O sub eight, O sub eight and a half, uh, and O sub 10. Right, so we've got a finite list of elements, or a finite list of um, elements of F here, right? A finite number of our open sets. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, we could have had more, we could have used 20 of them, right? But as long as we can cut it down to a finite list, and that finite list continues to cover the interval from one to 10, then I can say that my original F admitted a finite subcover of the set S. And this is a finite subcover of the set S here. All right, awesome. So um, with this idea, armed with this idea of open covers and finite subcovers, we are ready to define um, our big idea in this class, which is compactness. And we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you there.